Yo, what is going on Guardians and welcome back to another Destiny 2 gameplay video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you my brand new Anonymous Autumn Roll that I've been using. I've already racked up almost 600 kills on it. Now let me preface this by first saying, <laughs> I know there's been a lot of sidearm action on the channel lately. We had a new uh, exotic sidearm come out, we had the breach light come out, I've had this new sidearm here. I know, I get it, I really do. But uh, the other video I'm editing right now involves a whole heck of a lot of shotgunning and Titan gameplay. So rest assured I'll be uploading some different loadouts and approaches as well in the immediate future. But uh, I must confess, I am a massive, massive fan of sidearms. I have about eight different sidearms that I use regularly. I've got two Lonesomes, two Autumns, a Breach Light, a Buzzard, Traveler's Judgment, and uh, the Vision from year one that I'm using very frequently. And on top of that, the Anonymous Autumn is my most used weapon in the game with well over 12,000 kills on it. You could say I am a fan. So, what is this about the Autumn and uh, in this rule specifically that I like, right? That's the question. What is it about the Autumn and this rule that I like? And what makes it so dang freaking good? Uh, firstly, this Autumn I'm using has a fantastic rule with moving target for better and more consistent hit registration as I'm moving around and firing. It has Kill Clip, which you'll see a ton of in this gameplay, which takes it from 31 damage to the body to 42 to the body and about 60 to the head. Additionally, it has Ricochet Rounds and a Stability Masterwork, which gives the gun perfectly vertical recoil. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, I ended up slapping a Hip Fire Grip mod on this bad boy as well so that uh, I can track targets moving up close without having to aim down sights and still having solid accuracy and this is this is especially good when fighting hunters who have insane vertical and horizontal instantaneous directional change abilities and jumps this helps us deal with those those pesky roly-poly mother truckers you know what I'm saying uh, so this video includes gameplay from hunter warlock and titan perspectives so you'll clearly see how this weapon pairs with every class and especially shines in builds where your melee ability is a throwable it's a projectile right there are multiple multi kills in this gameplay you're watching where the autumn combined with a melee ability that's a throwable uh, keeps the streak alive and helps me put down things like shotguns and fusions before they have the chance to fully close that gap or fully charge up an air and till or whatever it may be there's two main ways to use those throwables in situations where you're outnumbered, and both are represented in this video. Just keep an eye out for them. The first option is to throw the melee ability first to start the engagement, and you basically begin the engagement with a guy that's half health. A lot of times I will actually throw the, the throwable melee before I even see the person. Right, I see red on the radar. I feel like they're going to push, and I roll the dice and I say, okay, well, I'm just going to throw my projectile melee ability right at the corner. And uh, a lot of times when your radar lights up red around a corner and you know someone's about to push, you can time it, you know, just chuck it at the corner so that they come around the corner and that's just instantaneously they get hit by it. And now they're already fighting an uphill battle, right? So you start the first guy at half health as you begin the, uh, the engagement. You clean them up with the sidearm. You reload and then engage the second player, maybe even a third player with kill clip active. The other way you can see me using the throwables is uh, the wrap to wrap up the multi-kill, right? I'll eliminate the first player, but I don't have time for a reload. The other guy's right there. So I dump what's left of the magazine into player number two, and then I just toss the melee ability to finish them off. As soon as I see their shield pop, I'll just throw that uh, melee ability to clean them up instead of trying to force a reload or uh, trying to close the gap and, and slap them, right? Use your throwable instead. That way you avoid things like melee trades. Because of the tick rate in this game, even if you get your melee in first, a lot of times you're still just going to trade melees. melees. Like they're, I don't know, it's almost like their hand reaches up out of the grave and punches you in the mouth after they die, you know what I'm saying? This happens a lot. So I still try to keep my distance, dump what's left of the mag, and then throw the throwable to clean them up. So this specific role is so incredibly good in the current climate of the Crucible. As, uh, as noted by another Crucible content creator recently, players in Destiny like to avoid primary gunfights if possible. There's something so satisfying about those one-hit kills uh, with special weapons that makes players often overcommit to using those special weapons. We love using our specials. We really, really do. There's no doubt about it. 
um, you know, most of the montages that you see uh, are, you know, are players using one-hit kill things and going kill, 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 right? You just love to see those kills in rapid succession. It's a really rewarding feeling. So with a sidearm, you need to reliably land your shots and be able to whip that thing out and ready it as quickly as possible. Now along those lines, this sidearm has uh, everything going for it. It's got moving target, which helps me ma maximize my uh, hit registration while I'm moving around, trying to avoid those special weapons fire. In addition, Anonymous Autumn has a base stability value of 50. Mine, with this roll, has 72. That means I can be much more accurate while filing, firing it at uh, the maximum RPM, right? The base handling speed on the Autumn is 64, which is pretty good. But mine, with my roll, has a handling value of 78, which means I can ready it faster and deal with rushers much more reliably because of it. Uh, focusing on maximizing stability, uh, handling, and target acquisition, as well as damage output with Kill Clip, makes this one of the most punishing weapons I've ever used in PvP against shotgun heavy teams. You might say, you know, yeah, right. I'd like to see you use this against a full team of six, rushing with Mindbenders and other shotties. And this is a valid challenge. Uh, many people right now are frustrated with the overabundance of aggressive frame shotties, especially Mindbenders, since it can roll quick draw. It can be kind of uh, obnoxious to play against. I get that. And uh, let me just show you. Here's a scoreboard of a match where I solo queued against a team of six, almost exclusively using shotguns, specifically Mindbenders. And in this match, I was using the Anonymous Autumn on my Titan. Now, the Autumn won't make your teammates play well, so no promises in that department. It's hard to play against a full team that's working hard for their wins, I get that. But during this match, their lead player actually ended up swapping off of a Mindbender because I dropped him several times in a row while he was pushing me with it. And using my throwing hammer, my vertical space, and backpedaling his pushes after coming, you know, you come close to bait the shotgun swap out of him, and then you backpedal and you gun him down while they're trying to close the gap with the shotty because you baited him into committing to it. All these things led to him realizing that he wasn't going to effectively outplay me unless he changed things up. So he swapped to a beloved instead. And that's that right there, that's the beauty of using these things well. You can actually make a skilled hunter main with a shotgun, which is you know one of the things people complain about the most right now, right? You can make a skilled hunter main with a shotgun feel like his approach isn't working. And that's a beautiful thing, right? It's an absolutely beautiful thing. Surprisingly, one of the biggest struggles about using sidearms and using them well <laughs> is, is actually finding more ammo for them. Special ammo drops so much more frequently than primary does. And special ammo is marked on your HUD. Primary is not. Primary is left behind in the form of a little white, almost clear box the size of a matchbox. And during the chaos of Crucible matches, it can be difficult to notice primary drops unless you're actively looking for them and noting when and where your teammates are getting kills too so that you can check those bodies as well. I often find myself going on little little scavenger hunts trying to find ammo and avoiding enemies while I do it. So try minimizing the chances of this happening by tossing on scavenger mods and sidearm reserves. They're dirt cheap mods and you can still use things like enhanced sniper rifle dexterity and other enhanced perks if you're using a, a hand cannon uh, in conjunction with them. I love how versatile these sidearms are too. Uh, I can feel completely free to use a kinetic pulse rifle, a kinetic sniper rifle, an auto rifle, a bow. I mean the pairings are numerous with a sidearm depending on how you want to play and what ranges you want to engage in. I usually default to running a sniper like the Frigid Jackal or a Silicon Neroma because I like getting those instant one shot picks at range and then pushing in to clean up the stragglers. But I also enjoy using a Chattering Bone or a, or a, a Mita Multi-Tool and uh, getting some picks on people who are laning with snipers and then making my approaches after they've been dealt with. So, yeah. Well, I hope you liked this sidearm and the sidearm gameplay. Keep in mind, we got the uh, Play My Way tournament com coming up very, very shortly. So the qualifiers are February 29th and March 1st, that weekend, Saturday, Sunday. There's going to be plenty of matches going on. We've got like 500 teams, so there's so many matches going on. We won't be able to broadcast all of them. But we'll pick some of the ones that we think are going to be the most interesting. Then we're whittling it down to the final 30-some uh, teams that are going to go into the finals week. Uh, March 7th is going to be the full broadcast. All the matches, all the activity going to be happening right there. Feel free to follow if you want to see this tournament. This is the biggest tournament in the history of Destiny. Feel free to go to TrueVanguard.com and follow the page there so that you can get notified when we go live. 
and uh, we'll also be uploading some of the more interesting matches here on YouTube as well. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. Thanks for watching, and thanks for spending your time with me. I love you dearly. Be warm and well-fed, and I hope to catch you in the Crucible.